Hi, I'm Samir Raya, and today I'll be talking about the genetics and treatments of Alzheimer's. In general, there are two gene categories that determine whether a person develops a disease, risk genes and deterministic genes. Hereditary Alzheimer's genes have been identified in both categories. Risk genes only increase the possibility of someone developing a disease. Researchers have identified the APOE gene as a risk gene. The APOE gene has three forms, APOEE4, APOEE2, and APOEE3. Everyone inherits some copy of the APO gene. The APOE E4 was the first risk gene identified and has the strongest impact on a risk for a disease. Around 40 to 65% of people diagnosed with Alzheimer's have the APOE E4 gene. If someone inherits one copy of APOE E4 from either their mother or father, they have an increased risk of developing Alzheimer's. Those who inherit two copies from their mother and father have an even higher risk of developing Alzheimer's. Also, the APOEE4 may make symptoms of Alzheimer's appear at a younger age. Deterministic genes directly cause a disease. Scientists have found that these genes, which account for 1% or less of Alzheimer's cases, cause familiar early onset forms of Alzheimer's. The genes are rare, but all of them affect the processing and production of beta amyloid, which is a protein fragment that is the main component of plaques and is thought of to play a role in the death of brain cells. Researchers have found these four genes may cause Alzheimer's. Amyloid precursor protein, known as APP, was identified in 1987 and is the first gene with mutations to be found to cause Alzheimer's. It can be found on chromosome 21. The second gene with mutations found to cause Alzheimer's is the presenolin 1, also known as PS1, was, which was discovered in 1992, and variations in this gene are the most common cause of inherited Alzheimer's. It can be found on chromosome 14. In 1999, presenolin 2, known as PS2, was the third gene with mutations found to cause Alzheimer's, and it is found on chromosome 1. Also in 1993, the apolipoprotein E, E4, known as APOE4, was the first gene found to increase the risk of Alzheimer's and is the risk gene with the greatest known impact. However, having this gene doesn't mean that a person will develop the disease, as it only increases the chances of the disease. It can be found on chromosome 19. Genetic tests, such as blood tests, are available for all the diseases that are associated with causing Alzheimer's. There is currently no way to cure or stop the progression of Alzheimer's. There are medication and non-drug approaches that can be used to help improve symptoms. Mild or moderate Alzheimer's is usually treated with choline esterase inhibitors, which increase the levels of acetylcholine in the brain. Acetylcholine plays a key role in memory and learning. These inhibitors help postpone symptoms from worsening for 6 to 12 months. Some of the common cholinosteris inhibitors include Aricept, Exelon, and Residine. Now I'll talk about some of the common cholinesteris inhibitors used to help manage symptoms of Alzheimer's. Aricept is one of the most widely used drugs to treat symptoms of Alzheimer's and is approved to help manage symptoms of mild, moderate, and severe stages of Alzheimer's. This drug can cause the blood-brain barrier. Exelin is another drug that is approved to help manage mild and moderate stages of Alzheimer's. It helps prevent the breakdown of acetylcholine and butyrylcholine in the brain by blocking the two different enzymes. Both acetylcholine and butyrylcholine are involved in memory and learning. Therefore, higher levels will help the brain nerve cells communicate better. Residine is approved to help treat mild or moderate stages of Alzheimer's. It prevents the breakdown of acetylcholine and stimulates nicotonic receptors to release more acetylcholine in the brain. Moderate severe Alzheimer's is treated with Namenda, a drug which regulates glutamate in the brain. Glutamate processes information. Namenda may delay the worsening of symptoms in some patients and allow patients to maintain certain daily functions longer than they would have without medication. This concludes the lecture on Alzheimer's genetics and treatments. Thanks for listening.